Today we welcome Raji Merotra, radio broadcaster, television anchor and filmmaker. Raji has recently been doing a series of interviews with famous figures of our time and that's the first question that I'm going to put to him. Raji, many of these people are people who, about whom we read every day in magazines and newspapers and there's really a, like an overload of information about them. When you interview them, what is it in what ways do you think you are going to take the viewer beyond what they already know? I think you sort of put your finger on it. There is a lot of information about them, but we don't have sufficient insights as to where they are coming from and what they have to say. Uh, and I think that the, the value added by a television interview is that people articulate themselves not merely in the words that they speak, uh, but in the manner in which they speak them. Uh, both the words and, and the body language and the whole process of communication that takes place. Uh, so I feel that that really is what we are striving to do here. As long as something of seven being remains, I will remain. I imagine God um, like my grandfather. My guest tonight is Pandit Ravi Shankar. And we're also sort of seeking to access uh, people that you don't ordinarily read about and you don't get this information load about, uh, at least to sort of the layers of their personality and the persona behind the public image. So what gets, tends to get written about is the public image. So we're seeking to go deeper than that. At the end of the day, when you've done an interview and you get a chance to see it, uh, what is it that makes you feel that this is a good interview and this is not such a good interview? What for you personally uh, makes you feel that something has worked? Well, I think there are two responses. One is sort of the purely personal, personal individual, me as human being, and the other is me as professional. And I think at, 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 at the personal human being, me level, uh, the satisfaction that I get from being an interviewer is that if I feel in that process of, of talking to someone that a degree of empathy has been established and, and, and real communication has taken place. And very often I've found that people I've interviewed with, interviewed, uh, uh, that has led to longer term relationships and friendships uh, with, with the majority of the people that I've, I've done uh, my program with. Uh, at the professional level, it is when I feel that the person, the person has revealed himself uh, in a manner that he has not ordinarily done in the past or, or with other uh, interviews in the print or in, in, in television and that I've been able to create a comfortable enough space for that person uh, to reveal himself or herself. Uh, if you are ask me the, whether, whether, uh, whether I am in the nation or Dalai Lama, my answer, yes. But it, in the sense, it's a day, uh, I can, uh, it's a day, at Dalai Lama's place uh, to succeed, which is the previous Dalai Lama, particularly the Dalai Lama, is to work, uh, fulfill, is to fulfill is the, uh, his work. Uh, but this is, does not mean, uh, but, but, but then, you see, if you ask uh, whether I am the reincarnation of the being of the Dalai Lama, then my answer is no. Do you know that for sure? Not very sure. Not very sure, but but I guess I feel. <laughs> in an interview, it's sometimes necessary to provoke your subject, you know, to sort of needle them into either exposing a part of themselves that they're reluctant to expose or to speak about something that uh, they want to hold back. Is this something that you are comfortable with? Would you do it? Well, I have to say that it's personally something I'm not comfortable with, and I think sort of the the, the technique of being a good interviewer. Uh, is to exploit and to explore uh, what your own personality is and the manner in which you relate to other people. Uh, it, it rarely works uh, to put on a persona uh, that is alien to you. And so I find that I'm better able to communicate to people by establishing an empathetic uh, relationship. Uh, this isn't to say that uh, uh, an aggressive, a more uh, needling uh, approach to interviewing is, it doesn't have a place. Uh, 
it, it doesn't mean that a gentle interview is not penetrating. It both can be penetrating. It's, it's the technique and strategy that you use. Uh, one is to sort of create a, a safe space where the person will feel comfortable and will answer your question and will and thus reveal himself. And the other is that you provoke the person so that his mask slips and he reveals himself with his position. Uh, ordinarily, I think that if you're a, a public figure, you're publicly accountable, you're a politician or you're a bureaucrat or civil servant, um, uh, you are then uh, open to and, in, and, and sort of, uh, uh, I think, uh, vulnerable in a sense to that kind of uh, questioning and approach. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, uh, uh, that Indian public figures are not very comfortable being kind of provoked and needled under the scrutiny of television cameras. You know. um, I just I found it very interesting. You know. Do you want to talk about yes, that? Yes, I think that you know, because the television as a genre is still, and, and television news interviewing in particular, is only beginning to, um, to come into India and establish itself. And so many of our sort of uh, politicians and, and the leadership in their 40s and 50s uh, haven't grown up exposed to, for example, you know, the American concept of soundbite, where you need to have the ability to encapsulate what you want to say in 30 to 40 seconds, where you, you don't get on television. You, you, don't, you lose out on the competition uh, for television time. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you look at our politicians, whether it's in parliament or in interviews, very few of them are in fact articulate. Uh, whereas uh, in, 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 in the more developed world, where there are more sophisticated uh, technologies of communication, uh, eloquence is in fact the prerequisite for public office to be able to communicate your ideas effectively. Uh, in the absence of that, uh, if you really do want to get a public figure to reveal himself, uh, there is a greater pressure. Uh, you're, you're obliged all the more to create this safe space uh, that, I, that I had mentioned. And uh, uh, it, it's also that as an interviewer, you need to create a profile for yourself that this is the kind of interviews that you do. I mean, I'd love to be able to say that it's going to be easy for me to tailor my interview depending on the person that I'm interviewing. Now, you can get, get away with that if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're an occasional interviewer or, you're, doing a new, or you're, you're, you're interviewing for a specific program. But when you're establishing a program identity, uh, if I'm going to persuade, as we managed to, we, we got one of the very few interviews with, uh, with J.R.D. Tata, with Pandit Ravi Shankar, with, with Baba Ampe, Several personalities who really haven't done television interviews before. Uh, and, and, and many of them said, well, we want to see how your program runs before we agree to come on. And we've had you know, a, a virtually 100% success rate on whoever we've invited to appear on the program has agreed. Uh, so it's important for an interviewer and a program, if you have a run in particular, to establish this profile. <laughs> My guest tonight is Pandit Ravi Shankar. Pandit Ravi Shankar is India's preeminent physician, but all the world's his stage. Pandit Ji, you have experimented, you have worked with fusion, you have worked with dance dramas, you've played a number of instruments, uh, but you have retained your interest and commitment to the classical, pure, purity of uh, Indian classical music. Uh, you're 75 years old. Uh, what satisfactions and joys has music given you? Well, the maximum. Yeah, naturally, and as you said, in different ways, not only playing my sitar, which is the main thing, of course, the highest joy, but next to that I have been very happy by creating things that I have always felt like something different, whether in form of orchestration or smaller groups, or music for films or whatever. I think also that an interviewer really needs to remember that he is really the vehicle. He is not, or she, is not the center of the show. Uh, you, you again have a style of interviewing that is, uh, you know, there, uh, around the personality of the person doing the interview. Um, what I try to do is both in terms of the interviewing technique and in the manner in which the interview is produced, the, the, the technical aspects of it, uh, is for the interviewer to recede in the background and to yield the floor, as it were, uh, to the guest. And so, for example, there are very few cutaways, if at all, uh, of me as the interviewer. And we keep the camera uh, on the person being interviewed, uh, frequently even while the question is being asked, uh, to look at the person's response as he sort of uh, assesses, analyzes the question, and, and prepares his response. And I think that, too, is extremely important. Our technology is growing at a rate where uh, we might be able to receive radio signals from other 
uh, more advanced civilizations. If you were able to establish contact and communicate to them, what would you say? What would I say? <laughs> well, it's not so easy, you know, because uh, if they are several light years away, whatever I say to them, uh, some, something with uh, some question I may ask them, uh, it will reach them, so if they are ten light years away, that will reach them ten years from now, and they will reply, they reply. The answer will reach 20 years from the time I asked the question. There is not a risk in this kind of technique that um, you are in a sense providing a platform where a public figure who already is very comfortable projecting a certain image might just sort of continue to do so in that um, what are the chances that a new insight will come out, come out of such an interaction? Well, you know, I, I think that the, the, the program design, and that this isn't the physical format of it, but the approach, the intellectual approach, the, the emotional empathetic positioning of it, uh, determines who you feature in the program too. Uh, for example, I wouldn't get a garrulous politician on my program. In fact, we don't feature garrulous politicians. We don't feature politicians at all. Uh, because what, you, what you're suggesting would really apply to a politician, and you, you, give, him, uh, you give him the platform of a uh, half an hour slot in television, He's going to say what he wants to say, regardless of the questions you ask. And, and let me give you an example of where I failed because of this approach. Um, as, uh, some years ago, I was doing an interview with, with President George Bush. And uh, I, 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 we come from a culture here in India, at least I do, uh, of, of, of feeling somewhat overwhelmed and awed by a major, major personality, the President of the United States. And uh, the President of the United States comes in with a brief, which he's been given by the State Department. He knows very little about India anyway, or has very little interest. And this was the time when the Americans were selling Stinger, uh, surface-to-air uh, Stinger missiles, sea missiles, uh, to Pakistan. And I felt that this would be an important issue to raise, because the Americans were saying these missiles were being sold not to be used against India, but to be used in North and Afghanistan and what have you. Uh, I had 30 minutes with the President, and he just filibustered me. Uh, I could, I just simply couldn't get around to asking him or pinning him down on this question. I would ask this question and he would go off on a tangent and he would fill up time to say what he had been brief to say. Um, and, and my questions were in a sense redundant. I didn't have the self-confidence to interrupt the President of the United States and say, no, that is not my question. This is my question. Uh, and it, it, it then sort of dawned on me that I should begin to tailor uh, the profile of my interviews for the kind of interviews that I could do well uh, if I didn't have the personality to take on the President of the United States, and maybe that's not the interview I should be doing. What is obvious from your description of the way that you shape your interviews and the kinds of people that you interview, that you are more comfortable interviewing people whom you personally admire. Now, this is all right when you're shaping the whole character of a program, but when, for example, you just have to do an interview for a television news program or perhaps for a documentary film, is it all right to let your personal um, likes and dislikes, as they were, uh, shape the manner and mode of the interview? But I, I would sort of also argue that while intellectually I would like to believe that when a person goes in to do an interview, he is intellectually neutral and doesn't have a position. Uh, but I don't think that's the way it really works in, 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 in real life. We all have our likes, dislikes, and prejudices. And uh, I, I think it's, it's somewhat inevitable that it will come to the fore. Uh, the important thing is, is to be mindful of it and to be aware uh, that, that this is the sort of uh, the ideological position I have, perhaps. And, and, and from that, uh, respond uh, to the person that you have to interview. Because it's not just where you're coming from, it's a channel that you might be recording the interview from that will dictate uh, the position that you take. And not just the position that you take, who you interview. Uh, so I, I don't think in that sense the interviewer is ever a, a completely a free agent. Uh, in, in, in what he does. Uh, Raji Narita, thank you very much for suggesting that there's no such thing as a neutral interview or a neutral space. And thank you for sharing your insights about your career as a television interviewer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.